God the glory. Okay. Amen. All right. Calm down now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I said to them, let's use this um, auditorium so that there should be a closer proximity. It was deliberate. I, they had planned to use that. I, I just prayed this morning. I said, let the, you know, people, impartation can come from observations. People don't understand. There are certain impartations, certain dimensions that wire impartations that are not taught. They are not taught. It could just be as a grace looked at you. Something entered you. It can just be like that. So people, that is why, hold on, that is why the teaching of impartation is not exhaustible. There are no total keys to impartation. There can be some, some observation. If you see me go, that's, that was not written before that time. If you see me go, was not written before that time. You knew observation. So that is a way impartation. So I just said to them, let's, let's just come. Yeah, the place will be packed out, but no problem. Let there be a close proximity so that we can just have time. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. One time, a young man by the name of Absalom, there's nobody that is totally bad. There's nobody that is totally bad. No matter how bad someone is, he can still be used as a bad example. Absalom Absalom said something when people came and you know we know how it is that every judgment is given at the gate the gate is a place of legislation and for decisions so the king will sit at the gate how Absalom won the hearts of the people was that he waited for them at the gate and when he met them at the gate before the gate of the king he would speak to them but there was something Absalom said that we need to address in 2 Samuel 15, if you read verse 3, when someone came to Absalom, Absalom looked at them and said, this matter you have brought, they came for judgment, they needed justice. He said, this matter you have brought is good. Your matter is right. But the problem is that there is nobody sitting down deputized for, by the king to hear you. Your anointing is genuine. But the problem is your audience. The unction, sometimes, when your audience is corrupted, you start doubting your oil. And that is why when the devil cannot stop a man, he pollutes his audience. All of the attacks on your image, on your integrity, all the attacks of stories being peddled about you, is because the enemy wants to corrupt your audience. Because when the people no more believe in you as a person, they can't believe in what you carry. When your integrity is already questionable, then your oil is not valuable. I wish you are following what I'm saying. So most times, we are praying and crying to God for the oil, for the anointing, and we forget to intercede for our audience. Your matter is right. Your anointing is genuine. The calling of God upon you are genuinely called. But why is it as though you have been in a prolonged wilderness? It's because your audience has been polluted. No one is deputized to hear you. And when your audience is polluted, who will hear you? No matter what a man carries, but when those he's sent to, they are already mentally corrupted. The man's message becomes a mirage. It comes with a level of unction. And that is why a man, as it were, will go out evangelistic prowess and there's manifestation and come to his local work nothing happened because the mind of the people is polluted so most of you now are, you now are set programs outside that stand back at home because you, you, you think the anointing of God upon your life it manifests more as no it's because those outside they have not heard anything negative about you so their heart is receptive are you ready for this to this conference ah, yeah, 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 yeah. so because their mind is virgin towards you their mind is virgin and open towards you any prayer they take you with all their heart but those who have been around you and that is why have you noticed that most people who are around the grace the grace doesn't work for them in fact the grace actually fights them 
the man is so close to the altar and so close to the oil that the grace actually is fighting him because no matter how close you are to an anointing it's an, an anointing this anointing can frustrate you ask Gehazi he slept and woke up with the prophet yet he still obtained leprosy you can be familiar with the anointed his anointing is not familiar with you you can be familiar with the anointed but his anointing is not familiar with you you will pray you will cry to God father move ahead of me arrest my audience and let my message gain acceptance arrest my audience and let my message gain acceptance move ahead of me arrest my audience and let my message gain acceptance say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i can't hear you at all in the name of jesus i can't hear you pastors in the name of jesus as i pray as i pray lord move ahead of me lord move ahead of me arrest my audience arrest my audience. let my message gain acceptance let my message gain arrest my audience arrest my let audience. my message gain acceptance my open your mouth and pray Kaparasha. Only believe Only believe And only believe All things are possible Only A turnaround in ministry is possible a new wind of revival blowing over your assignment is possible lord i believe lord i believe all things are possible lord i believe lord i believe Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Things are possible, Lord. Believe and Lord, 
Angels ascending and descending. May this be a, a place of encounter where ladders are released for acceleration and ascendancy in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. From take your seat from whatever nation, continent you came from. I want to say you are very welcome. And I want to formally apologize to you for all the hassles in getting here. The road, we are not always like this. Amen. We are not always like this. It takes a lot of sacrifice to be here. The road and everything. We are currently, our airport is being built and um, it's being worked on. And very soon, all you have to do is just fly from Lagos to the airport. And the airport is about five minutes from here. So, we are believing God and putting pressure. They are working on the place. It's going to take them a couple of months to be able to run through it. The preliminary stage is being worked on. So, at that point, ah, 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 amen, with all the battles of the road. So, by then, you have no problem at all. You just land, you just walk in, you finish, you go to the airport. You know, you have a shuttle from the church that will just bring you take you so there's no problems so i believe in god just pray for that to and press seriously on the governor on that and god is going to help us amen i want to appreciate all of you maybe tonight i'll be able to do um those of you from out of the country you deserve the right of first mention we welcome you specially those of you that came from different parts of the world god bless you this evening we'll have time to um mention nations that are represented at that we also actually appreciate those who are represented here in nigeria and different states okay break your bible to second kings second kings chapter four lord help me today verse six Dr. Fide will do the exhortation tonight before I share. We, we, it would have come up before me, but we, we are starting very late this morning, so and we want to have more time. We don't want this conference, it's too precious for anything. We want to take time, so there's no need to rush and rush. We just take time to do what we want to do. Verse 6, 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 6. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. I want to share briefly on what I titled, There are no more vessels. There are no more vessels. Heaven is making demands. Sir, we have pastors, we have prophets, we have ministers of God. We have teachers of the, of the world. We have a lot of people in the ministry fold, evangelists. These are people who are actually ministers of God. But heaven is not looking for ministers. Heaven is looking for vessels. God says, I see a lot of pastors. I see a lot of ministers. But my problem, heaven now is looking for vessels. There are no more vessels. Sir, a vessel... Is a container, as it were, that is configured for a particular assignment. A vessel is not just a container, but is a container that is configured for a particular what assignment. Please, I want you to listen very well. Listen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 In a great house there are vessels Of gold, of silver Of wood, of earth Of stubble If any man purge himself he shall be a vessel unto honor Is that correct? How many of you understand very well In the house There are times 
if you have plates, you have cups, you have tray, there are times a tray becomes useless. Because the immediate assignment cannot be carried out by a tray. At that point, the tray is no more a vessel. It becomes a utensil. Sir, you cannot drink tea from a tray. At that point, you need what? A cup. But the tray is there. You want to eat your rice. You don't need a cup. You need a plate. So God is saying, they are there. There are many things I want to do. But there are no vessels. There are no people who are wired for this assignment. They are not configured. Sir, you don't throw away a utensil only because it is dirty. A utensil becomes useless when it's not configured for that particular assignment. God said, this assignment that I have, there is a mandate, there is a mission, there is a, an assignment I have for my people. But my problem is, my people are not configured for the particular assignment I want for them. Everyone has become configured for an assignment they think God has for them. There are no more vessels. When Saul was called by God, he said he is a chosen vessel and he specified his mandate. Acts chapter 9. If you read from verse 6 down, he says it's a chosen vessel and his mandate was specific. From verse 15, sorry. His mandate was specific to the Gentiles, to kings, and to children. A chosen vessel to bear my name to the Gentiles, to kings, and the children of Israel. Meaning, this is why I wired him. So you have been a man of God for 15 years and you have not been a vessel for one day. We saw that assignment upon a child called Timothy that Paul was wired. Who he knew his grandmother, knew his mother. He was wired. Timothy became the bishop of the Ephesian church. The church of Ephesus, a church of 44,000 people. Yet they love the Lord. The problem is, many of us, the man said, he said, listen, there are no more vessels. I need you to be very careful. What are you wired to fulfill? When you, listen, when you do not fulfill the mandate on which you are called, the assignment for, exact assignment for which, you see, in the football team, Every player has an assignment. And your assignment determines your placement. Sir, everybody wants to be ahead. They call them forward. But there are those who are kept behind. They call them defenders. The defenders are not seen except the time of crisis. The defenders are not ahead. They don't have an international ministry. But they are the grassroots. The defenders are not projected, but they determine what happens to the net. They are the ones who are not projected. They are the ones that people do not see. They are the ones at the background, but they determine what happens. One of the problems that Gehazi had is that he didn't know what he was called to do. That was why when, when <laughs> listen to this, when Elisha spoke the counsel of God to Naaman and let him go. There was something Gehazi said which you must take cognizance of. In verse 20 of 2 Kings 5 he said my master has spared Naaman. There are ministers that don't spare anybody. Every politician they must milk. Every young girl they must pollute. Every contact, they must manipulate. They don't spare anybody. They see everybody and everything as an opportunity to make money. My master has spared. Once the man comes to church, I asked a young pastor one time, I said, I'll come every time I see you, you must hold a picture of a politician to say, please pray. He promised this. He promised that. I said, I dare not bury women in your church. Are there no single sisters in your church? Why are you not carried away or moved with the burdens of these people who have nothing? Because your ultimate end is what you can get from them. 
So it's about the politician. It's about the big name that has promised you something. Not knowing that those people are already at their state of rest. That little brother who has nothing is a project in the hand of God. And your impact is only felt like David. When you pick those who are discontented, those who are disdained, those who are dismissed, and you make them materials and become mighty men. There are no more vessels. There are pastors. If there are vessels, sir, Africa will not be the way it is. You are praying for the anointing. God said no. If you just study there, he said the oil stayed. The oil is waiting for those that will make themselves vessels. Don't pray for the anointing. Just make yourself a vessel. The anointing flows. The oil stayed. The oil stays for those who make themselves vessels. There are no more vessels. So people, people are people are, are seeing manifestations as sign of approval. A man of God finished a crusade one time, finished a massive crusade in a particular Asian country, I think Venezuela, and finished ministering things, happened miracles and the rest. As he went to his hotel room, the Lord said, Prepare, you are going this night. You are going this night. What have I done? The Lord says, Going home that night. The Lord said, I didn't send you here. Miracles happen. The Lord said, I didn't send you here. God will always glorify his name even when you are wrong. I didn't send you here. Watch this. There were three laws and three instructions given. Can you, can you look up? I know you are writing a lot. Can you just look up? There were three instructions given that every Nazarene must obey. Number one, he must not touch a dead thing. Number two, he must not drink strong drink. Number three, his hair must not be cut short. How come you always focus on hair? Samson's hair. Samson's hair. Because you are not understanding. The, the act of Samson tearing down the lion to you, it was a miracle. But it was a violation. Because he was not supposed to touch a dead thing. So there are many manifestations as far as God is concerned. It's a violation. There are many blind eyes that we open in your program. God is not happy because that miracle hardens you more in sin. I wish I'm talking to somebody this morning. We call it a manifestation, sir. But before God, it was a violation. Because the Nazarene, sometimes when manifestations happen, be scared. We saw those things up. Samson tore a lion. And many of you are, are so excited. Samson with his bare hands. He tore a lion. He tore a lion. You are, you are empowering his rebellion. He was not. Can I surprise you? The second time was also in the midst of a celebration. When he was getting married. He took a strong drink. You see, backsliding is gradual. Backsliding is gradual. There's no backsliding that's instant. It's gradual. For not having time to pray to having too much time on your phone from staying around the confines of watching gospel music to slipped into secular from moving from watching christian messages into watching skits and you are laughing it's not it's not ungodly it's not it's not immoral it's just to laugh from laughing you start seeing naked women from naked women you go further you are going i know something about the holy ghost he announces his arrival. He does not announce his departure. When the Holy Ghost comes, right you are speaking in tongues. When he leaves, you can still be speaking. And he wist not that the Spirit has departed. There are no more vessels. So I began to ask myself a question. The song said, Oh, oh Lord, lift your right hand. Say, Father, may I do? Say, Father, may I do? only that you are. take your seat i want to ask you a question listen to this are you sure you came hungry doctor have you studied the parable of the ten virgins five year wise five year foolish the bible called them foolish and if the bible says someone is foolish you are foolish God called them foolish. But there's, there's something that got me worried. When the foolish ran out of oil, the bridegroom told them, go and buy a 
of them that have oil. It is of them that have fake oil. Of them that have oil. They have worked with God so much. They are now custodian of real oil. But they commercialize it. They are selling. If they were virgins, they would have been expecting the bridegroom. They had oil, but with the oil they have, they were in the city doing transaction. They were not expecting the bridegroom. They were men of God, but they were not vessels. Nobody is following me in this service. Sir, these are people. It didn't say fake. Okay, let me show. Maybe that one is too far. That one is too far. You don't understand. Jesus said to Peter, One day, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father which is in heaven. The next thing Peter said, you will not die. And he said to me, get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't say, get out of Peter, Satan. He didn't say, you demon that entered Peter, get out of Peter. He said, no, you, now you have become Satan. From being a vessel of God, in the next minute become a vessel of the devil. He said, he didn't say, get out of Peter. Peter, you Satan. He said, you, you, you are now Satan. Because the spirit that possesses you determines the vessel unto whom you are. So it's not about coming to church and having workers. I'm doing workers meeting. I'm doing workers meeting. The Bible says on the last day you will know that there are workers of iniquity. It's at the last day we now know what kind of worker you are. He said, not meat for the master's use. The reason why I'm a vessel is for the master's use. So, why, how come that woman ran out of vessels? Even backed up by a prophecy. Can we study that? Can we check that out? Because of a debt that was owed. You see, many of us, you live your life without an understanding that you, there's something you owe your generation. You are a debtor. Look at what Paul said. In Romans chapter 1, if you read verse 14, you see the first phrase. Verse 15, you see the first phrase. We all quote verse 16, but not doing this progression now. He said, I am a debtor. I am a debtor. There is something I owe my world. And in verse 15, he said, I am ready. No matter what it costs, I am ready. I was taking a nap in the plane. I wrote and I just took a nap and a voice came to me. He said, if you refuse to pay the price, you become the price that will make others pay the price. It came. It was like an angel whispered it. I took out my pen and I wrote it. He said, if you refuse to pay the price, you become the price that will make others pay the price. If you refuse to pay the price, your reproach in ministry will become a price that others will learn from and pay the price. If you refuse to pay the price, your 30 years of unproductivity in ministry we become a reproach that we make other younger generation pay the price. If you refuse to pay the price, you become the price that will make others pay the price. An instruction was given. Are you getting something? Are you getting something? I believe in manifestation. We are going to be imparted in this conference. Heavily. Heavily. But it's very important that we understand how to work with God. Have you asked yourself a question? How come when he was about to feed the people, the loaves, the loaves, the loaves were more than the fishes? The loaves were more than the fishes. The love is the bread which speaks of the word. The fish is the manifestation. Many of you in your churches, your fish is more than the loaves. That is why they are not, they are not men. When it comes to feeding men, the loaves should be more than the fishes. When it comes to feeding children, you can give fishes more than loaves. You are not raising men, you are raising babies. When the fishes is more than the loaves. He fed 5,000 men. Man, man who speaks of maturity, man who speaks of growth and stability. When you want them to grow and be matured, let the loaves be more than the fishes. When the loaves are more, and that is why you come, it has to be the 
word manifestation is secondary the word of God is primary manifestation is primary manifestation is secondary every other thing is a substitute the word of God is the raw material See, the, when the wind and the troubles came there are no roots in them somebody's not getting something here now Proverbs 25 verse 4 when you take away the dross then there will be deceiver for the final Proverbs 25 and verse 4 don't waste my time take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the final a vessel can become fine a vessel can become appreciable when you take off the dross if you go back you will discover that the problem that that young prophet had the prophet who died leaving his family in debt he had one problem he was not relational oh, let me teach you something in every profession there are referrers people make referrers do you know sit down please do you know even in law there is nobody who practices general law there are property lawyers there are defamation experts there are tax consultants when it comes to issues of filing tax they are professionals there are immigration lawyers so when you go to a, a, a defamation lawyer that you have an immigration issue he directs you to the immigration lawyer. then in medicine there's nobody who practices general medicine there are surgeons there are pediatricians there are gynecologists they make referrals say i'll refer you it's only pastors that don't refer arrogant you are not a deliverance minister what your people are going through is demonology they have demonic problems refer them to who can help them you are not a hidden evangelist you know all you can do is to cast out devil this person has cancer carry his hand to a man who has a healing anointing say lay on this is your ministry learn to refer you are too proud you are too proud if I take them there they will leave me who will leave you will leave you stop protecting people who will leave you will leave you who will stay with you will stay with you who will leave will leave stop protecting people stop trying to stop you know to, to, to act as though you are the, you are the, you are the maker and author of their lives can I even give you a trick can I even give you a trick? When I say a trick, not in error, but in revelation. When people know you are not worried about where they go to, where they come from, they stay. When people know you are not bothered about where they go, they stay. You say, I went to go and see that pastor. Hey, I see. Hope he's fine. Say, yes, okay, well done. And did it. See, my pastor said they don't care. He doesn't even care. They stay. People are arrogant when you make when you make them feel they are your source. He says, I'm a debtor. I am ready. Whatever the price is, I am ready. And in verse 16, he says, I am not ashamed. <gasps> because as I begin to pay the price, there will be battles and challenges. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So what happened? I'm telling you how we got to that progressive state where there were no more vessels. Just the same way in the kingdom now. There are no more vessels. How come people are dying? How come so much is not being done? Oh, you think, you think the gospel has gone round? Islam is the most popular, populous um, religion in the world. Islam, is the, Islam grows at a very high percent despite the multiplicity of churches we have. In fact, it's the multiplicity of churches that is even the problem. I was talking with a father in faith and I was telling some things and he was laughing. I said, sir, he said, the problem in ministry, I said, sir, with all due respect, can I be free to talk? He said, yeah. I said, we don't have a ministry problem. We have a Pentecostal problem. The breakout and rebellion we see in Pentecostalism, we don't see it in Orthodox. Do you know the, do you know the logo for rebellion? Holy Spirit said, Dr. Bakari, if somebody says Holy Spirit said, can you argue with Holy Spirit? <laughs> that, that is the biggest God, 
told me. Listen to this. God told me. Holy Spirit said. Has become the biggest cancer in Pentecostalism. Somebody come to you and say, Holy Spirit said. You can't question the Holy Spirit. But can I surprise you? When you live, the effect of your living is what makes us know the spirit that spoke to you. Many of them is their human spirit. It wasn't the Holy Spirit. It's their human spirit. The Holy Spirit told you to leave a ministry. You left and there is crisis. The Holy Spirit says you leave a ministry. You left and you are castigating your former boss. The Holy Spirit said leave a ministry. You left and you are trying to convince all those who, who you passed up before to first. So you didn't hear the Holy Spirit. It's your village spirit that spoke to you. It's your village spirit. God, you see, the Bible says, even if there's a prophecy, the elders can judge it. When you say God said, we can't question what God said, but the fruits of it, we can question it with scriptures. God is not the author of confusion. Sir, if you leave a man's walk and you move with people, you only change that signboard. As far as God is concerned, that your new walk is an extension of his walk. In the estimation of heaven, your new work now is an extension of that man's labor. Go to a city where none of them can find you. Go to a location, change your number where none of them can reach you. Start a work that is built on a solid foundation. You know, some of you may not be happy with some of the truths I've shared. No, some of the truths I'm sharing, I know some will not be happy, but it's okay, you have already registered, so there's nothing you can do. We don't refund. <laughs> it's not refundable. So it's up to you. If you want to leave, no problem. But I will tell you what will help you. So what, what happened in the process? All right, let's go back there. How many of you love the word of God? Let's go back to verse 3 of that chapter 4. We read to verse 5. Let's x-ray and examine what was the problem. Second Kings chapter 4. Let's read from verse 3. Let's see the instruction that this woman was given. Whoever is on the console, don't waste my time. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Go, borrow vessels abroad. Who was he telling? The woman herself, you. Go and borrow vessels of thy neighbors. Now read verse 4 and 5. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, upon thy sons, thou shalt pour it out into all those vessels and that set aside that which is full. Now listen to this. Look at verse 5. Let's see where the problem is. Verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons. Who brought? Who was instructed to go and borrow vessels? From where? Her neighbors. Who did she send? I am so bitter. It doesn't matter even if the prophet is speaking. This neighbor, I'm not going there. Why don't we have vessels anymore? Number one, bitterness. Sir, bitterness. You go and borrow vessels from your neighbor. Go and borrow vessels. The woman said, no. Even if you are dying in debt. My children can go and borrow vessels. I won't talk to this neighbor. There are pastors, no matter the anointing, no matter the prophetic word, there are certain people they have vowed never to make peace with. Bitterness. Let me show you something. Many of you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hebrews 12, 14, follow after peace with all men and for holiness, without which no one shall see the Lord. Now look at verse 15. L looking diligent. Lest any of you fall of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness. Now, hope you know that the marketing of scripture is man-made. Chapter 14, chapter 15. Scriptures were not given like that. It's man that demarcated it for the sake of order. So chapter 14 and chapter 15, verse 14 and 15 actually together follow after peace with all men and for holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligent lest any root of bitterness in other words nothing frustrates your attempt to be holy like bitterness nothing frustrates your attempt to be holy like bitterness
bitterness. Nothing frustrates a man's attempt to be holy like offenses. Hannah, study your scripture. Hannah, her biggest problem in 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah's problem was not barrenness, it was bitterness. As soon as the husband brought the second wife, she was bitter. The Bible says after Eli, Eli spoke to her, he said she was no more bitter. That was when she got pregnant. So many of us are not productive because of bitterness. We are bitter. We are offended. We are bitter. We are bitter. When bitterness is rooted, it brings forth trouble. When bitterness is rooted, it brings forth trouble. In 1 Samuel, no, 2 Samuel 13, from verse 1, we know the story of a young man who was called um, Amnon, who was the son of David. Amnon had a stepsister. Her name was Tamar. Tamar was the sister of Absalom. Amnon lost it. The, the Bible there, the word they use love, that's, that was wrong. Some of the translations of King James is not correct. Some of the translations, not the scriptures, the translations. And he said love, the right word, we lost it after. Because the love there was not agape. The love there was not agape, it was filios. Lost it after the sister. You know the long story? God had this virgin and hated her. And there was this reproach. And she was the sister of Absalom. Absalom was waiting. I'm telling you what brought bitterness in the heart of Absalom to rebel against David. Absalom was waiting for what David would do. David kept quiet. Absalom was watching. He marked his brother. Two years later, verse 23 of that same 2 Samuel 13, when it was two years, Absalom told David, let all the king's son come for banquet. The king said, why? He said, don't let all of them come. And he spoke to, the king released the, the, the sons, and he spoke to some of his servants. He said, well, I'm known as drunken and well drunken. Kill him. Two years later. That's what bitterness can do. Two years later. Two years later. He said, kill him. And they killed him. David wept. Because Absalom has killed his brother. You see what bitterness can do? Absalom looked around the palace and all David's friends and was looking for who is also bitter like him. In 2 Samuel 15 verse 12, a man called Ahitophel was offering sacrifices. This man, they came to recruit him from the altar. This man was recruited into the camp of evil from the altar. He, he offered sacrifices from offering sacrifices as a priest. They carried him into the camp of conspiracy. You are not following what I'm saying. This man was recruited into satanic oppression from puppet. The guy was on puppet ministry. From puppet, they carried him straight into Kovun. The Bible says, as soon as as soon as Ahitophel saw Absalom was bitter, he followed Absalom. Who was Ahitophel? Ahitophel was one in 2 Samuel 16, 23. The Bible says, when you come to him, it's like you inquired as from the oracles of God. When he opened his mouth, it's as though the gods are speaking. How did they succeed in getting Ahitophel like that? Let me show you. 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Read verse 3. 2 Samuel verse, chapter 11 verse 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, It's not this Bathsheba, the daughter of who? The daughter of who? Eliam. The wife of who? Uriah the Hittite. I Absalom, Ahitophel rather, was bitter. When David sent messengers, say, Who is Bathsheba? They said, The father's name is called Eliam. David messed up that woman and killed the husband. In 2 Samuel 23, 24, I believe. 2 Samuel 23, 24. 
Go to verse 33. And verse 34. Do that first. Go to verse 33 and verse 34. Eliphelet, the son of Ahazbai, the son of Makatite, Eliam, the son of Ahitophel. Bathsheba was the granddaughter of Ahitophel. And David and Ahitophel were friends. Yet David slept with his granddaughter, killed his grandson-in-law, Ahitophel kept quiet. You are my friend. You did this to my daughter. No problem. As soon as he saw someone that was equally bitter, he followed him. I've been waiting for this opportunity. Bitter people attract their kind. Have you seen people leave your church? They connect to those who left two years ago. <laughs> oh, nobody's what I'm talking about. They become, they enter the same WhatsApp group. Thank you, son. Association of church leavers. Apostles is association of church leavers. So, uh, that was the offense. Some of you don't know why you first stood up against David. I'm showing you. He said he slept with his granddaughter. The man didn't say anything. There are some people around you that are not talking because they don't have opportunity to fight. So he kept quiet. Was waiting. Was waiting. As soon as he saw Absalom was speaking his language from pulpit. <laughs> from pulpit, he was recruited and he joined. You see what bitterness can do? Bitter. Bitter. There are people today, some of you, the reason you, you cannot become a vessel to God is because of the level of hurt you are carrying. What your wife did, what your husband did, what a man who you served did. You served him genuinely and you feel the treatment you got was not right. Seven years, eight years, ten, twelve years of your life you were with him. God was preserving you from many disasters. You are not aware. You are only checking the returns. Bitterness. And that's one problem the body of Christ. Bitterness. Bitterness. You are preaching holiness, but we can see bitterness from your language. I don't know what. Holiness that is void of love is charismatic witchcraft. Any message on holiness that is love bankrupt is charismatic witchcraft. You are preaching purity. You are preaching the right standing with God. And from your languages, you are lashing out on pastors. You are tearing down preachers. You are attacking men of God. Sir, you don't know holiness. What you know, you know is not purity, it's piety. It is, the, it is the righteousness of the Pharisees that wear long robes. They wear long robes to be seen as great. The Bible says, except your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of these people. You shall not see. Holiness! Every man who is genuinely walking with God is an overflow and carrier of love. When you meet men who are walking the supernatural, you can see love. They exude love. They exude love. The love of God overwhelms them. One of the signs of greatness, that greatness is simple. Hardship is complicated. Greatness is simple. Meet great men who are truly great. They are so simple. You are wondering, is this all they are? They are so simple. Go around great people. They throw jokes. They are happy. They laugh. Check complicated people. You feel from. There are some people you feel from. You, when you meet them, you'll be wondering why you feel why you feel the form. When you meet, they say, What did I feel from for? Very complicated. You have protocols here, you have security here. Am I too hard? I'm sorry. I'm, if, if I come out hard, please forgive me. I saw a man of God. He came to greet me. And um, he came with escorts, which is not a problem. But I had a problem with something. About six people came with him to my office. Three ladies, three men. They were wearing a particular uniform. So I needed to know what profession 
police, army. He said, no, it's his protocol uniform. Said, okay. Why are you here? He said, I want you to be my father. I said, no problem. I said, okay, so how old are you? I got another shocker. He said, he's 38. Said, okay. He said, ah, daddy, are you seeing anything? I said, no, 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 no. I'm not seeing anything. So before you are 45, you will learn. <laughs> before you are 45, 47, after all these people uniform deal with you. As after all these young ladies who are your daughters now carry this book against you, you will learn. Says, is that what God is saying? No, it's not God. It's Complicated. Complicated. And you see, that act of complication is actually not an act of the spirit. That is why native doctors we have to draw something on their face. Because if their face is bare, you won't believe them. You came, you came to consult a man and he, he's handsome. He, he, he can't be hearing from the gods. He's too cute to hear from the gods. So he has to be complicated. <laughs> So when you see one chalk on his face and all of those acts of God. <laughs> so, so he has to tie a red thing here. All those things mean nothing. No. He will tie a red thing here, right around his face. All of those things is to put more fear in you that the gods are with this man. Then to make you see that you can see one of his eyes will now roll one white chalk. That does the eyes of the gods. <laughs> Bitterness. Inability. God has to heal our heart. Let's start on a good platform. You must let go of offenses. Bible says offenses must come. This is how to be healed of bitterness. Let go of offenses. You left the ministry seven years ago. Till now, you are still talking about the ministry. The ministry has moved on. You have not moved on. Let it go. As soon as your former boss posts something, you want to post something else to counter what he has posted. Let him go. Can't you move on? Let go of offenses. You want to be free from bitterness? Leave bad companies. There are people that will keep polluting your ears with negativity. There are certain ministers that are fire extinguishers. They just, they, when you sit down, they spend hours discussing people. They spend hours. They don't pray. They are not challenged. It's all about ministers. This minister, they, who made you a referee? Who made you a referee of another man? A pastor was being some sport, some squad. Um, he made some utterances that, that was documented. They put it online, and it was as though he was involved in some racketeering and all of that. And people were speaking, saying all kinds of things. And I went to the Holy Spirit, and I was asking the Lord because I needed to stand. Our duty is to stand when one person is going through a crisis. Our duty is to make a brother feel that he has brothers. Our duty is to make a sister feel that she has sisters. We can never succeed in isolation. We only succeed as a team. So I needed to stand with him. But I needed also to be careful in my stand so that I don't offend God. So I went to inquiry. Father, this thing that has been said, I didn't watch the documentary. I don't watch things that are negative. I guide my heart. I guide my spirit. And I was asking the Holy Spirit. I was shocked. Look at what is being said about this person. What are you saying? The Lord said, what is being said? I said, what they are saying about him? The Lord said, what are they saying about him? Any question I ask the Holy Spirit, he ask me back. I said, what are they saying about it? I said, Lord, look at what they are saying. That he did. The Lord said, is that what they are saying? I said, yes. He said, I'm not aware. There are people who have long made peace with God, but you are still dragging their faults. God says, I am not 
in my book I've cast any error to my sea of forgetfulness stand and defend him so I came out and mentioned his name and told you church let's pray for him I was standing on divine authority because I've gotten signals from heaven and there will be preachers on the pulpit who are, who are still dragging what God is not aware you see you must be careful so you do not mix emotions with instructions I'm wasting your time right no let me let me round up so I can leave your face be careful so you do not mix emotions and instruction he spoke to you we are aware but now your emotion has overwhelmed your assignment Hear this the woman if you read verse 5 in verse 3 he said shut the door and thy sons do you know she actually shut the door and her sons there are people that are serving God but their service is infected borrow vessels shut the door and her sons this time she shut the door first and her sons before she asked for the vessels. You know, I'm not sure you study your Bible the way I study. I'm careful. If I did even study, the Bible says one of the sons of the prophet. Right? That's what the Bible says because that's what he called himself. But it was his wife that exposed him. He said, My husband, fear, my husband, thy servant. He was not your son. He only appreciated your anointing. He was not your son. He only appreciated the grace of God upon your life. But he told you he was your son. He was not your son. Because if he was, not your, if he was your son, he would not die a debtor. When the anointing on your father is not fully replicated on your life, please check your connection. Check your connection. And you know, a wife can expose you. Because they know. They know that you, said, you, you speak in front of this man that is your father. But privately in your room, they know you watch. They know you celebrate. <laughs> Some wives can finish you. I like, I like, see. Some women. Uh, 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 most wives. I'll get to that tonight. Most wives. Oh Lord. If you are married to a woman who, met, who have met with God, be happy. Because she puts you in check. <laughs> ah, no. You, she'll put you. You know as I'm talking now, I'm just imagining my wife. <laughs> because when I finish this message, it is the things I did wrong that will be waiting for me. The things I was not supposed to have said that I said. The things I did wrong. See, we are professing on that person. You now said this. Did you have to say that thing you said? I said, you know, when God is using us, that part is man. I said to her, that part, it takes a lot of humility to see a guide and obey. You know, there are some of you who will argue. When your wife becomes too afraid to correct you, God has left you. Because that is God's last weapon and resort. In case you don't hear the Holy Spirit, there's a human spirit. Hear this one. When <laughs> she becomes scared, your wife is rehearsing how to talk to you. She's rehearsing. How will I say it? She look at your face. I will, because you have become a demigod. Even your face alone. She said, honey, what? Sorry. Take your seat. And you know, eh? Let, I should round up. Son, when nobody is correcting you, it's not because you have grown, it's because you are beyond repair. No, look at your life now. When there's nothing correcting you, nobody, you are beyond repair, you are condemned. That shall not be your portion. Infected, said 
service let's see an example of effected service from leviticus chapter 10 the two sons of aaron nadab abiyu the two sons of aaron nadab and abiyu the sons of aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the lord which he commanded them not verse 2 and there went out fire from before the lord and devoured them and they died before the lord these were priests verse 3 and moses said unto aaron this is that which the lord spake saying i will be sanctified in them that they come nigh me before all the people will be glorified and Aaron held his peace <laughs> who are you hold on Aaron was angry because his first son he had four sons Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar and Etama now the two sons of Aaron now this is the order when you take the sacrifice you take the censer fire comes from the pulpit to show that God has accepted the sacrifice. Fire comes from the altar on the censer and consumes. So they took the this, this, this censer. They couldn't wait for the fire. They light fire. Huh? By themselves. Infected service. Oh, you are laughing. But you are guilty of the same thing. You gave fake prophecy manipulated to buy church land. So you are wondering why it's not growing. Every, as far as God is concerned, everything he's seen there is an infected service. Because the root is bad. Strange fire. The car you are driving now, how do you get it? Manipulation. Gimmicks. So you are wondering why it's breaking down, why there is accident, why there are... Because God sees that as strange fire. But no, you are using the bus for the Lord. You are using the car for evangelism. No! If you are using it for as far as you are concerned. So long I'm doing the work of God, I don't need the Lord of the work. Be upstanding. I'm amazed at what you do. I'm amazed you came through for me. Even in the darkness, I my God, for me, what did I do to deserve this kind of love? What did I do to see that you're right? And what did I do to deserve this kind of love? Oh, 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 oh. Listen. How can Isaiah be around and God say, Whom shall I send? Yet Isaiah was around. As far as God was concerned, you are a man of God, but you are not a vessel. There are some of us, God wants to use certain challenges to configure us, to shape in us for the assignment. But our resistance, our resistance. Vessels for the master's use. So, it means there are some vessels that are not for the master's use. So, the question now is, who is using them? If I get into this now, I am going into... I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray and cry to God. Make me a vessel for the master's use listen to this everybody pastor benny Hinn, a great man of god one of the foremost ministers in the healing ministry you cannot currently talk about the healing anointing without honoring a legend i 
And I feel very uncomfortable when I hear people start attacking somebody like that. Very uncalled for. Very uncalled for. And I've warned some of you pastors to stop forwarding some funny things to me. For my own health. My spiritual health. Somebody forwarded something to me where a man of God was attacking Pastor Benny for writing a book. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And I said, why would you forward this thing to me now? He said, I want to know if it's right or wrong. Who made me referee? If that's what he feels, it's okay. If that's what the man feels, it's okay. But I think Jesus gave a full chapter to the Holy Spirit. Jesus. The whole of chapter 16 of John. In fact, from chapter 14, he mentioned chapter 15. If Jesus, our Lord, who is our model, could give full chapter to the Holy Spirit, then one book on the Holy Spirit is not enough. Pastor Benin should write more. You can't be causing confusion all over the place in the name of Revelation. Causing confusion everywhere in the name of Revelation. You corrected pastors, now you are correcting scripture. What is this now? You are correcting preachers, now you are not correcting Bible that this is not what should be here. Ah, you are, your case emergency, we have to catch you. Our brother is going home. We have to catch, we have to catch our brother. He is our brother, we love our brother. Stop attacking him. Those of you are attacking him. Don't attack. You are seeing an emergency situation. You are attacking him. Our brother is going. You can't be using common sense to explain the Bible. The Bible is scriptural. Yeah? This is an emergency. This is a, it's a, it's a psychiatric situation. No? You attack this. You attack this. You attack this. You tear this down. This is an emergency. It's a crisis. We all have to look for our brother wherever. Catch him. I say, bro, say it. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> this is an emergency. Oh. But don't attack. Don't, don't attack anybody. Love them. But please, when you see things like that, start praising Father in the name of Jesus. Restore. 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 Because it's a serious situation. Why I'm saying that is because of young virgin minds that are not groomed. Some people don't know God. Some of you looking at me now, you remember your foundational days. You remember your youthful days as a young person. You end up with the Lord. You were doing evangelism, saving souls. But this generation, there is nothing they can look back to their youthfulness. All their youthfulness was spent on social media correcting pastors. Commenting on messages they don't. There's no memory about their youthfulness. Sir, so, there are memories we have of when evangelism. Of how we, co how we confronted with doctors. You have such things. But they don't have any memory of such. Just turn their phone. This is wrong. This one is right. This one is, You are commenting on, on, on matters of deities. So. Pastor Ben Hinn. This is my emphasis. Was ministry. In Orlando. Florida. I just came from Florida. A part of Orlando was ministry. OCC, Orlando Christian Center. And he grew a church to 7,000. Healing. Papa Idaosa preached there. Many great men preached there. Ura Robert preached there. Copeland preached there. Great men preached there. One day he was praying and the Lord said, I didn't send you to do this work. 7,000. You are a vessel but this is not your assignment. That was the church. Did you see that crowd? And God said, I didn't send you. Guess what God said? Close it down. 7,000. Make me a vessel for the master's use. Not my use. There are some of you who are opening branches and that branches may be the crisis of your life. Because God called you for just a singular work. And there are some who are doing singular work. God called them to open branches. And there are some God does not want them to open more than three or four. But they want to be everywhere. Master's use, master's use, not my use. The master's use, 
make me a vessel for the master's use are you getting something in this meeting make me a vessel say in the name of jesus father as i pray make me a vessel for the master's use whisper to me there are some of you they are certain listen 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 there are certain things you're doing for the lord and he long instructed you that this is not what he wants this is not what he wants but you are thinking of the years you have put in there you are thinking of the investment you are thinking of the timing if at certain locations he has told you to leave but you are looking at all that is on ground how do i live how where do i start from if you're in that category come to the altar now come to the altar the Lord just whispered that to me. He has told you to move out of what you are doing, but you are thinking of how you have heard that voice. Whatever you are doing now is as though you have lost your peace. You are not doing badly, but the issue now is how do I go and start something somewhere? How do I? How do I? How? It's a struggle. You need to be empowered to take a decision. You need to be empowered by God. It's a struggle you have found yourself now. If you're in that category, please come. We are here for renovation. We are here for impartations. We are here for direction. Because after this conference, you will take that step. After this conference, you will take that step. After this conference, that thing the Lord has instructed you, do it. Take that step. Take that step. I'm talking of the Lord, not your spirit. The Lord himself has spoken, instructed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now I'm asking of the Lord that the spiritual oxygen, the capacity, the grace and the unction the enablement, the empowerment, the rugged capacity to take a decision and stand by it, to make a move for the Lord, may it be granted to you. May it be granted to you. May the Lord send you help from strange quarters. From strange quarters. In Jesus' name. Amen.
move to your seat before we continue our prayers clap for your these people as they go please clap your hands for your your brothers and sisters as they return back we're going to pray a second prayer how many of us came here with the heart of encounter your ministry and your life will never remain the same Tonight there will be miracles, there will be healings, there will be interventions here. But listen to this. We're going to cry. You see, strange fire is a complication. It's a complication. You know, God hates mixture. He hates mixture. You know, you ask yourself a question. Why God hates mixture? Only God has the right to deal with mixture and remain God. Only God. That is why Satan said to if God know the day you eat of the tree of good and evil, you will become like him. Because he alone has the capacity to know good and know evil and yet remain God. When you are exposed to mixture, it will corrupt you. That's why he told Adam and Eve, eat everything, but don't eat this one. Because the day you eat of this, you are exposed to mixture. Good and evil. So, celestials don't know if you are good. They don't know if you are evil. That's why it says, because you are not cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Mixture. Many of us are victims of strange fire. Strange fire. You are the sensor, but you generated the fire. You are holding the censer. These guys were not left. They were priests. After the priestly order. Sons of Aaron. But yet. Strange fire. You are called genuinely. You are of God. His mandate and assignments upon your life. But you are helping him. To do his work. The way some pastors pursue visa. The way they pursue, they ready to lie. To say anything. Guess what? Genuinely, they want to go and preach. But strange fire. We will pray, Lord, have mercy on me and deliver me from strange fire. Have mercy. Any way I have tried to help you, that heaven has frowned at and has attracted the wrath of God, have mercy. But finally from now, Deliver me from strength. Have mercy and deliver me from strange fire. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please pray this prayer loud and clear. Say in the name of Jesus. In the, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Listen. How do I say this? How do you feel as a pastor that somebody you are having an immoral affair with, a wealthy woman, is the one funding your ministry? Are you seeing strange fire? She is wealthy. She will tell you, I will give you money for this work of God. But there's another work both of you are doing. And she actually fulfills it. She buy boss. She buy instrument. She buy... What if, you see, you can laugh. What I'm saying are the things that are happening. The kind of money you have not seen before, they give you. And Satan says, this one is a helper. And he says, this one is helping your ministry. So how do you pull out? How do you leave? That's where the funds are coming from. Strange fire. Strange fire. So you are stuck. You see, Satan will put you, Satan will always put you in a critical situation where to make a decision. If Satan wants to keep you for long, he won't totally own you. I'm wasting your time today. Oh, wow. If Satan wants to keep you, I didn't know it's almost 12. Almost one, sorry. If Satan wants to keep you for long, he wouldn't totally own you. No, he wouldn't totally own you. He would just take a part of you and leave the other part for the Lord. Number one, to make God angry. 
because if you are totally the devil's own God will not be angry you have made the decision but God is to, to any form of mixture in any dimension so and Satan also knows you will not totally be reactive because there's a part of God if I Satan doesn't care if you give him the tithe of your life just 10% is okay he said Moses go with thy people but keep the animals behind you can go but keep your flocks Moses said no this is a mixture have mercy on me and deliver me from strange fire <laughs> you know those youths in your church you know what they are doing you are blessing their things they are doing. because they are helping the work strange fire I didn't see anything I said the youths So that's why I said you may not be too comfortable with this conference but we help you I'm writing a book and the title of the book is I thought I was right and I, I expose some things I did for the Lord in the time of my life for 10 years and God said it was a waste that heaven did not take record of that 10 years and I explained how I did it the passion I moved from place to place and one thing that happened that made God say everything that was recorded was deleted the title of the book is I thought I was right I've been writing it in the flight pouring my heart very bare very direct with dates and locations those 10 years, this many years ago, God said those 10 years was deleted from your record. So you have to work extra time to feel back. You think I'm, I'm, I'm happy this country, next week, that country, come back. No. I'm trying to make up for something. I'm telling you a secret that I have not told. Only my wife is aware. If I tell you what happened I didn't think it was a sin sir it was a person I invited and God told me that before I invited him that in heaven his ministry ended 12 years before that time but what happened what was happening in the church I felt it, it was the one that could address it I thought I was right. Do you know you can be prayerful, sleep in the church, and yet you have no relationship with the Holy Spirit? Communion, intimacy, is different from intercession. Oh, you're not aware? Intimacy is not intercession. Intercession is for the needs of what you want. Intimacy is for love and fellowship. Have mercy on me and deliver me from strange fire please I want to beg of you if you want me to kneel down I will kneel down pray this prayer with all your heart so it doesn't appear you are a minister you are working for the Lord and yet there are so many challenges in your life you don't know why sir it may not be the attack of the enemy it may be the judgment of God because of strange fire open your mouth Lord have mercy on me have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Deliver me from strange fire. Have mercy on me. 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 Have mercy have mercy, 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 have mercy,
Show you mercy and may it deliver you from strange fire. Mm -hmm. I want us to pray this last prayer. It's not, I didn't write it here, but it just came into my spirit right now. Now, there are some of you, I talked about it, but I didn't write this prayer down. There are some of you now, your heart is heavy, you are bitter. By reason of certain things that happen in your course of ministry, you are deeply bitter. Deeply bitter. You are going to ask the Lord before Him, whoever has hurt you, no matter the gravity of the earth, you will say, Lord, I let go. Now, I'm hearing some. Some of you, it can be your wife, it can be your husband your in-laws can be the brother in faith who you trusted you don't understand it's easy for you to say forgive when you have been hurt when you have been stabbed sometimes you think when you forgive people or you let go you think they have become great no sir let me say this to you and I want you all to always remember this forgiveness doesn't make the forgiven powerful it makes the forgiver free. Forgiveness does not make the forgiven powerful. It makes the forgiver free. I let go. Father, heal my heart from bitterness. Take away this heaviness. Tell the Holy Spirit to help you. Go ahead. Tell the Holy Spirit. Heal my heart from bitterness. Take away this heaviness. Heal my heart from bitterness. Take away this heaviness. Lord, 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 I need you. I need you. I need you. Heal my heart from bitterness. I need you. I need you. Take away this heaviness. Heal my heart from bitterness. Take away this heaviness. Heal my heart from bitterness. 
take away this heaviness i need you i need you i can't hear you pastor i can't hear you evangelist i can't hear you prophet i can't hear you teacher i can't hear you apostle <laughs> In Jesus name. Father, we want to ask heal our hearts. Heal our hearts. Heal our hearts. Jesus, my Lord, I adore me, Lord, this more and more. Jesus, my Lord, I pursuing them we are doing all we can we ask today may your own will overshadow them <laughs> are there plans that we have that are not masterminded and orchestrated by you we give them up Amen. we give them up Amen. may you alone use us Amen. may you alone use us Amen. may we be vessels may we be vessels who is Idimo? 
Johnson. Who is by that name? Is there someone by that name? Johnson. Itumu. Please, if, if that's your name, I want to see you. Who is Lami? Who is Lami? Who is Lami? I'm hearing Lami. Remain standing. I want to pray. Who are you? Eh? Idomo. Igomo Johnson. That's your name. Why are you walking like that? There are people that will be healed tonight. <laughs> Some pastors are going. I just I see that already. Sister, give somebody those glasses. Let me pray for you. God wants to give you rest. You love the Lord. You love the work of the Lord. But the Lord says the issue of marriage is a problem. Huh? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Amen. I want to pray for you. Two things God will do for you. God will settle you. Amen. This Amen. is disappointment back to back. Yes, sir. When it's time it's supposed to be married, something oh, yes. happens. Yes, sir. One two three four yes sir. this is the fourth time yes sir right yes sir the fourth time you are yes, getting sir. disappointed yes sir very correct sir thank you jesus who's joseph my daddy is late he's late yes sir three who's months. joseph again okay he's the listen, guy listen listen your daddy is joseph but there's another joseph is with you yes innocent who, who is he who is it who is he's, the who is it to you he's the last guy i had uh, the, the last time. yes sir so you're counting them let me pray for you. No, it's not the last. It's the current. It's the current. Sir. It's the yes, current. It's the current. But both of you have not been talking. Yes, sir. Eight days. Yes, you have not spoken for the past eight days. Huh? Yes, sir. So, it's not that it's not that you don't talk. Both of you talk. We are not talking marriage. Yes, you just sir. talk like friends now. Yes, sir. But before you were talking marriage. Yes, but somehow it just stopped. You notice he stopped talking that part. He's not talking like friends. Yes, sir. Sometimes you have to be the one to call. Very quiet, sir. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? The hand of the Lord will be upon you. And he will help you. You live in Taraba. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. But let me pray for you. Because you have said to yourself, this conference. Eh? As I'm leaving this conference, I don't want to stay in Taraba again. You, you, you're because of what has happened there, you want to relocate. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Don't worry. You want to stay in Abuja. Yes, sir. Eh? Very correct, sir. You've seen a place, but you don't have money. Why are you smiling? <laughs> you don't have money for it. Let me pray with you. Amen. Whatever I say to you, you are, you are an SOP. No, not you, the one behind it. An SOP, right? Come, I don't like what I'm saying. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is not of God. I want to cancel I saw death. I saw attack on health, and the next thing, death. But the, the devil has lost the battle. Amen. I looked and I just saw that I've been I've been badness all the while I was preaching. The Lord said, Break it, break it. And I decree that whoever summoned you. In the name of Jesus, as I say this to him, I say it to everyone here. Whether anyone has been summoned on an altar, the couples of witchcraft, family altars, powers of deities, by this anointing, may their agenda backfire, their expectation be crushed. In the name of Jesus, the grace of God will rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mercy. Who is mercy? Wealth. Come. So, you need money for an accommodation. How much is it? Can I pray? You want the supplies to come. And this will be the beginning of it. By this time next year, we are coming from this conference next year. You are coming with your husband. Amen. <laughs> And the Lord begin to settle you.
Where do you live? Can I pray for you? Huh? Yes, sir. sir, do you know your problem? Problem Do you know there's a problem? Can I agree with you? Sir, you know the problem I see? Lord will help you. Sometimes, when you are too careful, you miss God. Mm. It's good to be careful. But you are too careful, you become careful for nothing. The Lord has called you to do His work. But you are waiting for the right timing to fully because you have started but you have not started you have started but you have not started you were in the ministry that released you and prayed for you you left yes. now you are supposed to have started you have started you have gotten a registration in name but you have not started intercess intercession intercession ministry. Eh? Intercessors Triumphant Christian Ministries. But now you have not that's the name. But the work itself. Oh, sorry. Pick him up. Were you in redeemed? Were you in redeemed? I'm, look, I'm looking at you. I'm hearing ROCCG. It was somebody there, sir. All right. Now, when it's come, let me know. Come. Woman, stand up. You are believing God for supernatural supply. Yes, because you want God to bless you because of this work. Yes, sir. But the Lord is telling me to ask you a question and I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried if you'll be offended. Will you be offended? No, sir. The Lord says, I ask you, will you be happy? If what you are doing is done to you. Because I see a, I see a ministry. I see you in the ministry. Yes, sir. But I see you on your ministry like a prayer ministry yes sir like a prayer meeting yes sir this is a, a sitting room a place people come to pray yes, you are sir. under a ministry you are doing your ministry under a ministry so he says you ask you would you be happy if this is done to you when you start fully your ministry Because you are asking the Lord You are asking the Lord for supply For finances Father give me finance So I can get a bigger location So that these people can gather And the Lord said He knows your genuineness He just told me say, Leave our heart is made up The Lord said leave our heart is made up I'll come back to you. Kneel down, Yema. Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. With the bread of life, of life that's our so come Change my world. Oh, Father to child, Spirit of Spirit, Spirit to Spirit, lighted by Your word, lighted by Your word. Oh, we don't run away. That's a common life. That's a common life. That's a change my world. That's a change my world. 
just breathe and know upon me. pastor I'm going to talk about now I want you to see me I want you to see me the Lord said there's a pastor here son you just found out that two out of your children are not your biological children you just found out and you, you have concluded to divorce your wife you just found out because they were sick and they couldn't give blood your blood could not match with them and you began to investigate and investigate you just found out that two out of the children are not your biological children. You've concluded on divorce. The Lord said, yeah. And the Lord said, this divorce, you have concluded after the conference. After the conference that you want to engage in a divorce. Please, I want to see you at the end of the service. If you don't get access to see me, I'm ready to come. See our AC. It will bring you to me. If you can, maybe protocols don't allow you see him or you see the NC come on Apostle Patrick stand see any of these two people they'll bring you to come and see me you've served her already it's something both of you have concluded please I want to see you God is still saying something there's something God is saying there's something God is saying I want you to put your two hands on your head you make this decrease to the Lord everything heaven has for me and my ministry in this conference it will not escape me go ahead and cry to the Lord everything heaven has for me and my ministry it will not escape me go ahead and cry to the Lord go ahead and cry to the Lord cry to the Lord cry to the Lord, to the Lord. 